Welcome to Key Point 800. In this video, I will be taking the 5th SAT practice test math calculator section. Um, I will sh personally show you how I took the SAT math section to and got a perfect score using my strategies. So, my first strategy is by is to use a scientific calculator instead of a graphing calculator because um um, I just I'm I just type faster on a scientific calculator, and I've been using it since seventh grade, so my muscle memory is pretty good with a scientific calculator. So let's get started. Number one, we're given this graph. Uh, what is the greatest change? So we need to find where the greatest change is, and you can see that uh, it looks like either this one or this one has the greatest change. But it looks like this one's steeper, so 2010 to 2011 is the answer. Um, Alright, so number two, we really have this chart. It shows some values, what phone is defines F. So let's look at the slope first. That usually determines a lot. So the difference between 13 and 5 is 8. The 13 between 1 and 3. The difference between 1 and 3 is 2. Uh, 8 divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Slope is 4x. And then let me see. Um, number three. So we have this. Uh, and he's making muffins, I guess. And he needs 2.5 ounces for each muffin. How many pounds uh, does he need? So 2.5 ounces is a measure analysis times that by 16 ounce over one pound is equal to 2.5 divided by 16. Okay, wait, um, we also have 48, so uh, so we had to times by 48 at the end, times 48. So, 2.5 divided by 16 times that by 48, you get 7.5. Uh, A. Number, number 4, uh, if 3C plus T equals 5, what is the value of CD? Divide by 3 over on both sides, you get 5 thirds. Uh, B. Number 5. Uh, weight is nine, uh, weight on object on Venus is 9 tenth of his weight on Earth. The weight of object on Jupiter is 23rd over 10 over on Earth. Um, if an object weighs uh, 100 pounds on Earth, how many more pounds is weight on Jupiter than Venus? So Jupiter's weight would be 100 times. 23 over 10, that's, um, so that is 230, and then Venus would be, um, so that would be 9 over 10, and that would be uh, around 900, not 990, um, so now, uh, so subtract, and it looks like this is 140 C. Um, and okay, number six, uh, bookstore sells novels and magazines. Each novel sells for four dollars, and each magazine sells for one dollar. If Sadie purchases a total of eleven novels and magazines that have a combined selling price of twenty dollars, how much does he purchase? So, um, so this is the system. So, four novels plus magazine is equal, to, or four four dollars per novel plus a magazine equals twenty, and we n plus m is equal to uh, 11. So let's just subtract these. Get 3 and equals 9 and equals 3. Answer is B. Number 7. Uh, so this association tends to increase its membership by N businesses per year. There were B businesses at the beginning, uh, which I find describes like expresses the model for the number of businesses so n it doesn't increase it a slope um and it's a total number not a percentage so it's not exponential and then so at the beginning that's a starting so it's b it's not subtract because it can be negative businesses at the beginning of the year okay so number eight which are fun is equivalent um uh, okay so Important thing you know. Uh, 
Okay, so let's just do this. So let's just evaluate this first. So this is a square, so it's 1.5 or 1.5 squared. So that's, I think, uh, let's just do it on a calendar just in case. So we get, we have, um, my bad, this is 1.5. 1.5 squared, my calculator is 2.25, 2.25 x squared plus or minus, minus 2 times 1.5 times 2.4, so go to 7.2, and then plus 2.4 squared. Five point seven six. So now we just um, look at what we have. All right. So looks like and are not these two because we got negative seven point two in the middle. Then the second the end. So that so this number minus this number is five point seven six is smaller than six point four. So the result will be um, will be positive. Uh, so the five, six plus five, would be eleven ish, more than eleven. So the answer to C is not that. That's too small because five plus six is plus because we should be the negative. It becomes a plus, point six point four. So the answer to C. Number nine, we have the Olympic Games. So the marathon is forty kilometers and it increased to forty two kilometers. Which are following is the closest to increase in miles. So we have a two kilometer increase times that by 1.6 over uh, one mile. So two divided by 1.6. That is 1.25. And series B. Number 10. Uh, we have a density of object, which are following, all right, the density of object is found by dividing the mass divided by volume. So, uh, which are following gives M, so just times V over is equal to A. Number 11. Uh, which are following is perpendicular. So let's find the slope of this graph. So when you, so when you move, 2x it comes positive 2x and then divide by 3 so the slope of this is 2 thirds m equals 2 thirds so then we need a slope of the opposite reciprocal opposite means negative and reciprocal means just uh, flip the denominator and numerator and then we want a slope of negative 2 thirds let's see which one accomplishes that for us um so or my bad is negative 3 over all right Opposite reciprocal, negative 3 over 2. There we, I didn't flip uh, the fraction right. Alright, so let's look at these uh, ones. So we subtract 3, this becomes negative 3x, and then divide by 2. It looks right. Answer is A. Let's just check the other one. This one would be 3 fourths. This one, or negative 3 fourths. This one would be negative 1, negative one half. This one would be um, negative 1 third. Uh, they don't match negative 3 over 2, so the answer is A. Uh, what is the value of x? So, um, this this matches this, you can just plug in 4 to here. So you can say that x minus 4 equals 2. As to, x is equal to 6, the answer is D. 13, which of the following satisfies the inequality? So let's simplify this and say that y is less than x minus 1 to make the math easier. So let's see here. So, um, so we're going to, um, so a, um, negative 2, m negative 2 for x, negative 2 minus 1 is, um, negative 3. So, is, is negative 1 less than negative 3? The answer is wrong. It's not A. We're 2. Um, so, negative 1 plug into the, the second equation. Minus 1 is negative 2. But 
um, 3 is not less than negative 2, so it's not right. Uh, 1, plug in 1, you get 0. Uh, five, but 5 is not... 5 is not less than 0. That's wrong. And then finally, um, plug in 2, you get 1. Negative 1 is less than 1. The answer is D. Number 14, we're given this chart. Um, so, if one surgeon is selected at random, which of the following is the probably, probability is that the selected surgeon is an orthopedic surgeon who's indicated professional activity is research. So we're um so we're looking at research and orthopedic seventy four. Seventy four divided by six oh seven divided by your calculator. And you get point one two one or point one two one nine. Uh answer is A. That's a waste of space. All right, number fifteen. So we're given this uh, survey. I guess a hundred thousand adults was selected from random from a large city and asked each of the adults, "Are you satisfied with air?" Uh, Seventy-eight percent. Yeah. Uh, so let's. This is must be true. So it can't. It has to be certain. So if all adults in the city, seventy-eight percent are satisfied with air, uh, that's like that. It wouldn't be the same. Um, it's a large city, there's like millions of people, a thousand is not going to be enough to have an accurate sample. Um, so, next one, um, and a thousand dollars are like that run for the city, same logic, and this one, it would be wrong, because that's a different city, the answer is A, none of them. Um, Alright, so we're given this... Uh, Tree growth factors. Uh, okay, so one method of calculating age is to multiply by the diameter by the constant called the growth constant. So let's say that's G. Uh, so okay, so so let's got an uh, American elm tree. So twelve for the diameter times that by the growth factor, which is four, and you get forty-eight D. Or seventeen, which is fun. <coughs> All right, what's the growth factor? So let's just look. This is slope. This is a slope question, um, because we're doing uh, age divided by diameter to get g. So let's see here. Let's just like get this line. Uh, let's just say, let's just take. 120 divided by 16. Do you see the growth factor? It's a good estimate. So use the calculator to get 7.5. And then, which one has 7.5? Well, it looks like it's shag bark hickory. So, this the answer is D. Number 18, if a white birch tree and a pin oak tree now have a diameter of one foot, which of all would be the closest difference in diameter 10 years from now. So the white oak tree have a growth factor of five and the pin oak has a factor of three. So let's just note that down here so you can access it better. So let's calculate their age right now. So we have 12 inches for the birch, age of the bir uh, birch tree will be 12 times um, the growth factor is five. 12 times 5 is 60, and then let's say the oak age is um, 3 multiplied by diameter, um, th um, 12 is 36 inches, or 36 years, so let's say 10 years from now. So the virtue would see 70 divided by 5 equals 14 inches, and then the, the, the oak will be uh, 46 divided by 3 is equal to so we do that on the calculator. We get fifteen point three. So we subtract these, we get one point three. Answer is C. Nineteen was the height of uh, AD. So what was the length of AD? So we're trying this. So this is also thirty degrees. 
uh, because it said 30, 60, 90. Uh, so this is equivalent to this. So you can see that, um, so it's going to be 6 because it's a special triangle. This is um, 2s, s, and then s squared. So 3 of you can call. And so there's 6. And number 20. So we're given this graph. Um, the wheel is rolling at a constant rate. The graph, the what should the following could represent? Which, uh, the graph of D, uh, which should, okay, so, the graph on the right could represent which of the following as a function of time when the wheel began to roll. Alright, so, um, I mean, it's actually D, because it's basically telling you what the height of the thing above the ground is so when we started here the height is here so the answer is D alright which of the following must be true if A is negative and B is positive so if this is negative and this is positive that means and this is negative so that means that um, basically that means that it's always positive so we know that C is always positive, so it can't be these. So, but um, because we're subtracting, we're taking a negative and adding, subtracting so and um another number, the negative becomes bigger, bigger. But the A remains the same, so it's A is like the same. So in the end, it's bigger than one. Series A. So, so in the state X, uh, Mr. Camp's eighth grade class considering twenty six students and thirty four percent of the students report that they have at least two siblings. The average size is in the eighth grade class is twenty six. Um, if the students are representative of students in eighth grade classes, there are eighteen hundred eighth grade classes. Um, which of the following best represents the number of your students have fewer than two C siblings? So, if they have, um, so we can say fewer, um, percentage is 100% minus 34.6 for the ones with fewer siblings. So it's 100 minus 34.6. You get 65.4%. You have fewer than two siblings. Um, So now uh, there are 1,800 classes, so 1,800 and the average class size is 26, so we multiply those together, we find the total number of students, and then multiply by 0.654 to get the number of students have fewer than two siblings, you get around 30,000, according to the calculator. Answer is C. Alright, so we're given these chart. Um, are the relationship between the monthly rental price R in dollars and the property's price increase uh, the, or the purchase property price in dollars $1,000 can be represented by the linear function which of the following represents the relationship so so this is the monthly rental price this is purchase price um so this is in thousands, so let's just look at the first, uh, the Clearwater Lane. So 95,000 over, or 950,000 over, which is 28,000. And let's just do that on the calculator. So 950 divided by 128, 7.4, who happened? technical difficulties. Oof. Okay, we're back. Alright, so divide that, you get 70, 
uh, 7.42 and the slope of 7.42 is closest to D that's the answer um, so uh, we get a 40% okay we're looking at the um, we're looking at Glenville Street, Street right here and the property received a 40% discount um, off the original price along with a 20% off the discounted price what is the original price so we're going to do a 40% discount is 0.6% of the original and then the 20% is 0.8 so let's do so the purchase the price right now uh, would be 140,000 so we got a so let's just uh, make so Let's say O is the original price, so we're going to say it's like this, O, original price, equals P, um, so we can see that original price is equal to P divided by 0.8 times 0.6, so, so we divide by 0.8, divide by 0.6, and we get a original purchase price of 291000 according, according all right, we get an original price of um, 291000 according to the calculator, SRSB. Number 25, we have an experiment. Uh, so, in 300 people, presented five uh, pictures arranged in random order. Each person was asked to pick the most appealing. Uh, of, the first of the first 150 participants, 36 chose the first picture among the remaining 150 participants. P people chose the first picture in the set. If um, more than 20% of the participants uh, chose the first picture, which of the following inequalities must be charged the positive values of P? So, so let's say, okay, you're so. So this doesn't really matter because they're all the same. So what I would do, I would do um, so it's, yeah, twenty percent. So yeah, so twenty percent uh, means that is greater, and we have point two here, and of the total per of the participants of all participants so it would be just be 300 so you're gonna make these two is not these two all right so p looks like p plus 20 36 is right so answer is d because we're adding to the number originally which is 36 plus p of the rest and we to get the 20 percent so next problem surface area of a cube is that where a is a positive constant, which are following gives a perimeter of one face of the cube. So, first we can divide by six because the cube has six sides to get like the area of the square. So the area of square would be a over four squared. Um. So then we square root a over four to get the one of the side lengths. So s equals a over four. So times that by four, you get a for the perimeter. And that's your answer. Number 27. A mean score of 8 players in a basketball game was 14 by 5. The highest individual score is removed. The mean score of the remaining 7 players becomes 12 points. What is the highest score? So, the total sum was 14.5 times 8. The sum, of, the sum of the 8 players was um, 116. So then, you have 116 minus uh, that x value, the highest score, um, and then we divide that by 7, because we don't have 7 now, equals 12. So 84 is equal to 116 minus x, so x would be equal to around... 32 and answer C.
Um, so we're given this graph. G is four times the slope of this graph here. If G passes through that point, what is the value of uh, 0, negative 4? Uh, so that's basically the y-intercept. It's just telling us. So what's the slope here? So this is run is 2 and then rise is 1. M equals 1 half. So y equals 1 half x minus 4. Let's plug in 9. So 9 over 2 minus 4. Oh, wait. Okay, right, so forgot. Is four times as much. So the m of g is actually 2x minus 4. Y equals. So plug in 9, 18 minus 4, uh, 14. Is your answer? C. Number 29. We're given the circle with the coordinates of the center. So for this one, you have to complete the square. Uh, so to complete the square, it's simple. Uh, plus 20x. So, 20 divided by 2 is 10, square that, you get 100, plus y, plus 16y, and then for the c value, we get 16 divided by 2 is 8, square that is 64, um, it doesn't, this value doesn't matter because we're finding a center, so, complete the square by factoring, and we get factor it down to this. So you can see that the center is negative 10 and negative 8. Answer is B. Number 30. If, um, so we, we're given y equals x squared minus a. Uh, if a is a positive constant and, and the graph um, is a parabola, which of the following is equivalent? So, um, yeah, this is a, um, uh, difference of squares. So, um, when you take the square root of both sides, uh, you can you get this, or square root of each term here, to complete the difference of squares. You get this, um, b. That's just something you have to know. A special rule. It's it's not a. Uh, the answer is not a because if you factor, if you distribute this out, this would be. Um, x squared plus a minus a squared, and that's not the same thing as x squared minus a. So the answer is b. On to the grid section. If horsepower and watts are unit of power, they are directly proportional, such as five horsepower is equal to three hundred uh, three thousand seven hundred thirty watts. Uh, how much um, power? In watts is equal to two horsepowers. So we're given two we're given two horsepowers and then we're doing the measure analysis, make sure the terms cancel out. Uh so just multiply that. So multiply two times on the calculator, two times three seven three zero divided by five. You get fourteen ninety two for your watts. And that is your answer. Number 31, uh, we have art and math for some reason, so we have this painting, Starry Night, um, its height is 29, and its width is 36.25, um, so what is the height of a rep uh, reproduction, so we're looking at the height, so one third, so we do one third times the height, so one third times 29, answer is 29 over 3, just bubble that out. Over that in. If, if um, um, if PQ is equal to RS, what's the length of um, PS? So let's just uh, set those PQ and RS equal to each other. Do you solve for x first? So solving this equation, we have two x equals six, x equals three. Now let's just plug it in. So we're gonna plug in three here. This will be two, and this will be three, and this will be two. So two plus three plus two is seven. Answer is seven for the total length. Yeah, just add those together. Yeah, okay, so number 34. In the xy plane, 
the point 2, 5 lies on the graph of function f. If f of x equals k minus 2x squared, where k is a constant, what is the value of k? So let's just plug in the coordinates. So k minus 2 squared is equal to 5. So k minus 4 equals 5. k equals 9. And that is your answer. Okay, we have a landscaper doing a rectangular garden. Uh, the length of the garden is to be 5 feet longer than the width. If the area of the garden will be 104 square feet, what will be the length in, of the garden in feet of the garden? Um, so, so we have the length is 5 feet longer than the width. So the length times the width will be 104 because that's the area. And we want to know the length. So I just uh, substitute in. Uh, so we can turn this to W is equal to 5 uh, or L minus 5. So L times L minus 5. Or let's just put a little thing here for the L to make it divergated from 1. It goes 104. Uh, L squared minus 5 L. Um, minus 104 or equals 104 so then uh, yeah let's just minus equals 0 so now uh, what factors of um, 104 make up 5 um, I'm not really sure so let's just do some experimentation On, with the calculator, um, so it's fifty two. So what's another factor of fifty two would be all right, so we have eight and thirteen as our factors, which is from um, messing around with the calculator. So L, so 8 and 13. So it would be minus 13, and then L plus 8. So length can be equal to 13. That is your answer. So I guess this is one of the moments where having a graphing calculator would be useful to just graph out the parabola and see where the intersects the x-axis. But um, if you're good enough with just playing around with numbers, you can find out the factors by messing around on the calculator, like I just did. Alright, number 36. Um, point P is the center. Uh, what is the value of X? So, um, so we know, um, Okay, so this angle here would be, uh, so this looks like um, 1, 2, alright, so, okay, let me think for a moment, um, so this, sh this should be, okay, so this angle here, Hold on. Um, okay, so so I think this single would be um, so twenty plus twenty is forty degrees of so these two angles it goes 40 degrees so I think um, I 
think this is something from a geometry that I don't really remember. So, let's just work this out slowly. So, let's just say, alright, I think this is, this angle is one half of x, so this is one half x, and, and, um, these two angle might be like the, so, Okay, so these two angles add up to be um, this angle because this, this um, if we bisect A, this becomes an isosceles triangle. And so this means that this is 20 degrees and this is 20 degrees down here. And the total angle for A is 40 degrees. Um, so then, so angle A is 40 degrees. And we know that A is one half of X. So that means that X is equals to 80 degrees. And 80 degrees is your answer. So if you forget that, that how to do that like I did, um, just try to look at your formulas from geometry. Uh, let me see if, if um, they give you that formula on the front or if you have to remember it. Yeah, it looks like you'll have to remember that the that angle um, is one half the central angle. Number 37, um, so we're given this distance and speed thing. All right, so so on one morning, she drove directly from her home in her to her workplace in 24 minutes, what's her average speed? So home, the distance from home to the work, uh, to the workplace, it seems like, um, so it's 0 0.6 plus 15.4 plus 1.4 divided by 24 minutes. So let's just do that on the calculator. Um, for the distance divided by time, 0 0.6 plus 0.6 plus 15.4 uh, plus 1.4 divided by 24 is equal to. Oops, I messed up. Is equal to um. 0.725 um, so this is her speed in minutes um, so to get hours you times that by 60 so times by 60 and we get 43.5 miles per hour so this is miles per minute that by 60 to get hours. All right, number 38. Uh, and she's gonna start at seven. That means there's traffic, and increase the freeway time increases by by 33 percent due to slower traffic. Uh, how many more minutes does she drive? So let's find out the regular time. So you do that by doing the distance divided by speed, times that by 60 for minutes. So, for example, 0.6 divide by 25 times 60 you get 1.44 minutes for travel time and then let's do the same thing 50.4 times 50 um, times 60 or 18.48 minutes and 1.4 divide by 35 times 60 Get 2.4 minutes, add those numbers together, and to get the regular, regular travel time. And we can see it's, we can see that it's 22.32 minutes regular time, regularly. So the new time would be this, times 1.33 when you add so because that's the freeway time so we do direct down the calculator 1.44 plus 18.48 times 1.33 
and then um, plus 2.4 yeah 28.41 42 estimating okay so 28.42 minus the regular time 32.32 you get 6.1 rounded to the nearest minute is 6 and that is your answer and that is all for the fifth SAT math um, with calculator section.